Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're gonna take our gulp a little bit further. And in the first video, we created our gulp file and we created our first task. In the second video, we added in a plugin and we used that plugin. In this video, we're going to be creating a new task that's not the default task. And then we're gonna show you some cool tricks where you can actually run tasks within other tasks. So keep watching and we're gonna get into that now. So between this video and the last, I just changed the folder name uh, to build. And we just had this default task that all it does is it uglifies our JavaScript and then outputs it to a folder, which is now build uh, slash JS. So this is great, but uglifying our JavaScript shouldn't necessarily be in our default task. Now, it's nice to keep your default task clean and break things up into separate tasks. That way you can run them separately or just a part of your default gulp task. Now you can make tons and tons of tasks here that do various little things and then you can even start and run those tasks in a specific sequence. So we're going to get started by creating a new task and I'm going to head I'm gonna go ahead and start this off with a comment that just says uh, scripts task and just a brief description. Uglify, it's saying that it uglifies um, and it's gonna do some other things late, uh, later. So now let's make a new gulp.task and this time let's give it a name and it's going to be the scripts. So this is going to be all things that we are going to do to our JavaScript. And just like before, we're going to have a callback that's a function. And inside of here, we can pretty much just grab our, uh, our code from our default task and put it directly in here. So now all we have is this gulp source. It's gonna find our JavaScript files uh, within the JS folder. It's going to uglify them and then it's going to output them in the build folder. So to see this in action, let's head to our terminal. Now to run this specific task, all you have to do is type gulp and then the name of the task. So we can say gulp scripts. Now we hit enter. And you can see that it started scripts and finished it in 7.64 milliseconds. And likewise, if we were to run gulp, just the gulp command without scripts, uh, it would still work because we technically have the same code in our, our default right here. So let's get rid of that. Okay, and what we can also get rid of is this callback function. Now instead of the callback function, what we can do is pass it in an array of tasks that we want it to run once you run your default task. So we're going to make an array and then in uh, a string here, we're just going to say scripts. Just like that, it's the name of our task that we want to run. If we had extra tasks, um, in fact, let's just make an extra task right here. Uh, let's make another one and let's just say styles. And this is going to be for styles. And this one is simply just going to output a console log for now because uh, we're not gonna make this any more complex just for this example. But we can say console log runs styles. Okay. Now we'll put a comma here and styles is added to our default task. Okay, so now we have two separate tasks here. Uh, we have a scripts task, we have a styles task. Both of these can be run independently. However, when you just run gulp by itself with no task name, it's going to run scripts and styles. So let's see that in action by just typing in gulp. And as you can see, it's run both our scripts and our styles task. It even tells you the output time for each of those individually and then the output time for your uh, default function itself. So these examples all show you uh, functions and tasks that you just run once and they're done. Well, that's not always the case. In fact, you can create a watch 
task. So in the next tutorial, we're going to be creating a watch task that watches certain files and then can trigger uh, certain other tasks based on the change. So that's something that you'd be used to if you're using something like SAS Watch. You can write a watch task that's going to watch your SAS for changes and then compile it when you change. That can then also trigger something like Live Reload or all sorts of other things. So you've now had the ability to create separate tasks, which is just building upon more of your Gulp skills. So keep watching, there's plenty more to learn about Gulp in the future. You're going to become a Gulp master writing your own scripts like nothing. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.